Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Tuesday Talk and Tarot. How's everybody doing this fine Tuesday morning? It's chilly over here in Bethesda, Maryland. Got my good vibes sweatshirt on. <laughs> good vibes all the time. Good vibes. All right, if you're joining me, what's up, what's up? I'm going to be talking about control. I'm going to try to control this conversation today about control. <laughs> um, if you're here, just give me an icon. Say what's up. Leave me a comment just also so I can see that I'm seeing comments. And I'm Lisa Meta for anyone who's new watching this. My company is Metamorphize. Mostly just get curious with people about their relationship with their, what I'm calling their emotional portfolio. So it's basically all of our emotions and all of these words like today is control. What is your relationship with control? How does it serve you? How does it hold you back? So basically all the work I do is about turning your inner critic into your inner coach or strengthening your inner coach voice so that you can get what you need to get done. You can achieve the goals that you want to achieve, but most importantly, you can relax in the trusting of yourself that you know how to navigate this crazy world we live in where we're constantly bombarded with ideas and different people's opinions and when you have your center when you are able to trust your own inner north everything can be easier and one of the best ways to do this is exactly what we do here it's like just get curious one word at a time and really establish your relationship with um, a concept or a word and you know be with like-minded people so you can have other thoughts and opinions and actually perspective shifting is where it's at i mean that's all i'm here to do is to possibly open up to new ideas for you so that you can go hmm i didn't think about it that way and when that happens you open up the possibility to change so my process is called the science of change because ultimately i'm here to support you to evolve into your next self, your next best self, evolve, 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 next self, next self, next self. Because last week we talked about identity shifting, which is this natural way of moving through life, but you're either doing it by default or by design, but we're always changing, we're always evolving. And so you're either run by default as in your default programming, not challenging it, not asking it, um, is that true for me? Does that work for me anymore? Or you're designing it, which is what we're going to do here today about control. So each week I just pick a different word, just like my podcast. Just I love that. I love how abundant and rich um, one word can be and how different and diverse it can be for so all of us here. So I want to even just, oh, hey, Liz, welcome, welcome. Um, also, just a reminder, I'm going to be picking a tarot card at the end. We're going to be working with the animal deck today. I'm just feeling that today. Um, this is the medicine cards. It's an animal deck. And um, each card is just a different animal. And then what I do is, based on the card that you get, I'm going to relate it back to control because I want to keep everything a cohesive. So yeah, we'll be doing that. So what, how that works is that you just pick a word and PB111224, what up, what up? What's your name? Welcome. Thanks for being here. Gonna be, you're going to be picking a number um, in about 20-ish minutes after I talk a little bit about control. So I would love to hear, first of all, if you're here, say hi. I see, oh, hi, Patty. Welcome. Um, yeah, so I was, I always just talk, I start with the def, I, the, I had so much come up, it's like my notes are a little scattered, so pardon the jumping around today, <laughs> but I'm not going to try to control my notes here, and actually that came up in my um, thinking about today, I also thought about how I just flow on these calls, I mean on these videos, I don't, I put some notes in here just to like, you know, in case I, my mind goes blank, I have some things I wanted to say, but this is not scripted. This isn't like I'm reading a talk or anything. And there was a time when I would never have been able to do that. I would have had to control each word, try to get it perfect, you know, plan it all out because I had to control what I thought you might think of me. 
or I had to control my own nervousness by planning so much. And that's kind of what I'm going to be getting at today is that over time of practicing these talks and doing other things in my business, I trust myself to flow here, that there is no need to control this moment because I can be here with myself, my thoughts and present. So this, um, let's talk, let's start with the definition. I thought these are the ones, there was a lot of definitions about control and please chime in if anything um, strikes you as interesting or as a takeaway or you're like have, have a question about control, just go on and leave a comment and I'll, um, I'll see it in a minute and I'll address it. Okay, so the definition, determine the behavior or supervise the running of. Maintain influence or authority over. Wow, that one's pretty powerful for these days. These, you know, controlling our societal narrative, controlling the influence over someone, the control over someone. So that's the other, that's a few things that came up to when I was thinking about this. There's self-control, there's other control, there's can't control, and then there's want to control. I think I, those are the ones that I came up with. If you can think about more of the ways that we control or don't control, let me know. But this led to, well, what do we really control? Um, back to the definitions. Remain calm and reasonable despite provoca provo despite when you're being provoked. <laughs> oh, Tuesday morning, sometimes my brain's not working. So that one's interesting because that one is about controlling your reaction when someone is either attacking you, provoking you, it can be subtle or it can be large type of provoking, but it's about you being centered and controlling. And, you know, I might want to add here that I think control gets a bad rap, right? Like some of the words that I talk about here, we would think are like negative, right? That, um, like jealousy I did the other week or complaining, right? And I always like to illuminate that. First of all, I think there's no good or bad. There's productive and unproductive as far as like, is it serving you for what you want and you need in your life? And um, I'm here and in uh, Washington, D.C. or Bethesda, Maryland area, my mom has a little art piece by the kitchen and it's a quote because she's a chef by Julia Child. And it says, Mo everything in moderation, even moderation. And I was just like, I wrote that to say today because I was thinking even control needs to be in moderation because too much control turns us into a what? Control freak. Not enough control. See, this is where it gets got tricky for me because if we took away control, does that mean we're, we're like in total flow, enlightened? Are we in, in like a space of total spontaneity and you know how to just like chill and bounce off stuff? Or is there a little degree of control that is needed in life? And I think my answer would be yes. And I'll tell you why. Um, if you know anything about my work, I'm always talking about basically navigating your mind. So let's just replace navigating with control. You have to control those thoughts. And for me, that's a necessity that is, that is a part of self-mastery is that you harness the power of your mind to use it towards energetically, vibrationally um, creating what you want in your life, managing your mood, like this said, to, oh, and then the last uh, definition here, regulate. So when it comes to those things, regulating, because if you are someone, let's say you're someone who actually, like I was back in the day, like very extreme type of person. So I would bounce from one side to another. So I had to get control. I had to get things under control. I have a bunch of sayings here because, you know, these idioms and these um, kind of like little sayings we have in life, some of them are because... <laughs> If things are true, right? Under control, out of control, lack of control. So when we're out of control, 
it, that's an experience you're having where you literally feel like life is happening to you, not for you, or you're not the, the driver in the seat, then yeah, maybe there is a time right now in your life where learning to get control. I mean, if you're in a car and you've lost control, you need to, you need to think quick and get back into control of that car or else you're going to crash. So I just want to say that I don't think control is necessarily a bad thing. And when used properly towards net, like controlling your, like regulating, control is about regulating sometimes, or control is about navigating your mind. You're controlling your thoughts. Um, for me, I guess control and willpower also came up. There was, it was really fascinating. Good morning, Mindy. 14, I got you. There was a lot of, oh, hey, David, Iceland, what's up? Wow, you're, you're popping around these days. I'm heading back to Mexico soon. Uh, well, I'm wishing you well and hope you're enjoying your trip, <laughs> trip around the world. Hey, Jamal, what's up, what's up? Uh, I noticed when I was working here with, or just like over the last few days, I took more time to think about this one, actually. I realized there was all these words that would come up that were like very close or like planning. I was like, hmm, fine line between control and planning, right? Or what about control and perfectionism? Oh, in my meditation this morning, what what did I, again, bouncing around today. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna control it. Then again, I think I bounce around all the time. Okay, yes, yeah, so in my meditation this morning, I thought this came, this sentence came. Control is the line where planning, effort, and thinking turn into attachment. And I was like, oh my God, I got to write it down. And I'm like, take my little blindfold off. And I'm like, um, but let's think about that for a minute. So there's an Osho card. I should have pulled it out. Let me get it. It's the control card. And when you look at it, it's all about rigidity. So this is where when you're feeling like you're you're moving through life super controlled, you're living in a very rigid space where it can actually hold you back from manifesting, from flowing. I mean, rigidity. Check this card out. I just found it. Look at that. This, if it's a mind card, which means a lot of our control is happening in our mind. He's holding on, white knuckling it through life. It's a contracted space. You can't live in your full, if you're, if you're like this, imagine driving like that too. I can't, I can't, I can't be like, you can't be like flow, flow, you know, if you're like this. So why do we try to control things? Well, everything that we do is about protecting ourselves. Everything, any addiction you do, any of your own personal mind patterns or sabotage, <laughs> special sabotage cocktails that you have, um, the way we stuff food down, the way we take in alcohol or drugs, the type of people we hang out with, sometimes they're not healthy. It's because we're actually trying to protect ourselves. From what? Sometimes from feeling. Most of the time from feeling. Feeling something that we're afraid to feel because if we feel it, it might shatter an identity that we might have had about ourselves, a thought that we're attached to. So we try to control everything to keep us stuck inside of this box because we're too afraid of the change. We're too afraid of the unknown. So we'd rather stay tight and stuck in something that we know versus open up to the possibility of that out of control feeling because maybe what we don't trust ourselves there so it's really going to come back down to trust when we talk about control we control things most likely because we don't trust ourselves if things are coming at us too quickly how am i going to react if we put our get ourselves into situations that challenge our sense of self our identity then it's like you want to go to battle, right? You're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So that's too, you know, we can feel like attacked. 
And that is too scary for many of us. So we stay controlling situations. If that resonates with you, let me know. Hey, Adrian, what up, Jamal? Hi, everybody. Let me check over here. What do you guys think about, what does everyone here think about control? I had a question I was going to ask you. So at first I was like, how does control play a role in your life? That's first question I wanted to ask. But then I was like, wait, is that really what I wanted to ask everyone here today? Or is it, what's your relationship with spontaneity? Or basically the unknown. So you can kind of answer either of those. What does, what does control, what does control play in your life? What role does control play in your life? You know, and what's your relationship with spontaneity? <laughs> what role does control play in my life? Well, like I said, control started to connect with planning for me. But in my 30 Days to Change program, I'm often talking about committed and flexible. So too much control doesn't allow you to be flexible. And if you're not flexible, you get that rigidity thing. And when you're in that rigidity thing, it becomes a very all or nothing type of experience through life. Very black and white thinking. And when you're in black and white thinking, all or nothing, you create a lot of space for disappointment. And that was one of the things that I had here is that control can really create a lot of expectation, which then can lead to disappointment. And then there you go. There's the connection between, well, what are you trying to protect yourself from? Protecting yourself from disappointment. So you stay in the control and you don't allow any room for anything sometimes to come in so that you can just feel safe in the control. Again, this is not, this is, I want to say that this is very smart. These are smart parts of us that keep us, that keep us um, navigating our life. For, so I guess what I want to say is even though control can feel very rigid and contracted, it can also be a space where people are relaxed in. And it's, that's tricky. It's a very tricky one because you, you're controlling your environment and, and that's relaxing you, but really it's boxing you in. So it's almost like the box you live in has just enough space for you to feel like you're moving. But if you go too far, you're going to hit a wall. And, oh, what did I have here? I had this um, thing about a wall. What was it? Oh, control is the wall protecting your vulnerability. So if you're inside the control box, let's call it that, the control box, you're moving just enough because so you think like, oh, this control is so yummy because like, look at me, I'm totally in control of my life. And then you realize like you come up against that wall and what's on the other side of that is vulnerability. And if you were to break out of that, you would really have to feel exposed, literally. There's an exposure that comes when you take all these walls down. And um, yeah, vulnerability is scary sometimes. But if the more you trust yourself, the less the vulnerability can harm you, but more expand you. Jamal, you're saying I control all areas and when it doesn't go that way, I just say, eh, whatever, I'm good. That's great. That means you have a healthy relationship with moving through what I have here, like the planning and the effort and, you know, also the flow. So like if it doesn't go as planned, I know that eh, whatever, I'm good. My version of that that I've trained myself over the years is basically, oh, I'm being rerouted to my best case scenario. You know, like what if at all times, if something doesn't go as I wanted and I was trying to control an outcome, which that's how I lived, which is how I got to, I was like, I can't live like this anymore. You know, like this trying to control everything and everyone. It was literally like exhausting. And so finally, I was just like, I'm being rerouted to my best case scenario, you know, like it didn't go as planned, something, this or something better. That was another um, like affirmation I had going for a while. This or something better. I still do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, yours is healthy. Eh, whatever. I'm good. That's cool, too. <laughs> whatever you need. So let's talk about. Uh, oh, yeah. Gisela quoted, gave me this quote yesterday. If you want to succeed in life, 
you have to learn to dance on a moving carpet. That's Gabrielle Roth for anyone who has done. Hey, Kathleen Booker, what up, queen? Miss you, miss you, love you. Um, Gabrielle Roth is uh, the founder of Five Rhythms, and that's a dance practice that you go into a room for two hours. It's silent dancing. It's a sober environment, and you use these five rhythms of life to dance. I'm not going to get into that right today, but this quote by her, if you want to succeed in life, you have to learn to dance on a moving carpet. It's kind of like <laughs> eyeballs. It's kind of like you can't, it's like, how can you control a moving carpet? You can't, you have to learn how to dance. You can only almost control what you can control and actually controlling um, and just flowing and moving. And the five rhythms and I always forget one. So apologies. And I don't know if anyone on here knows them, but the five rhythms are, um, I think it's flow, fluid, fluid. No, it's lyrical, staccato, chaos, Oh man, I always forget them. I gotta Google it because it bothers me when I five rhythms. Dance. Pause for the cause, everybody. Where can I find the five rhythms? Where are the five rhythms? Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay, why is it always so hard for me to find these? Anyway, I'll find them and, and share with you later. You'd think that it'd be like right on the website. Staccato, lyrical, slow. But anyway, the fact, the point is, is that we're always flowing through different energies. That's how long I've done that, that dance practice. That dance practice changed my life. It changes many people's lives. It's an amazing meditation of movement. But, and it's great because when you take away the voice, the, the talking to people, and you literally are moving through the space with your body, it is a mirror to how you move through life. Like leaning into different energies, sensing energies, trusting your, your sense of people's energies. And um, so we digress. <laughs> so let's see what else, what else? I wish it could be more flexible to go with the flow. Yeah, well, you're on your way there, Mindy. I mean, just the desire is, a, is part of the calling it in and bringing it in. Someone said, when something happens unexpectedly, you can't just yell plot twist and go with it. <laughs> yeah, you can. I mean, when something happens unexpectedly, I think what I what I do is just have trained myself in some ways. And yeah, I do say, by the way, I train myself because these things are a training. And I love to ask the question, okay, what are my options in this moment? So that's like one of my personal manifesting hacks or life hack or Lisa hack or whatever. So when something happens unexpectedly, you have to train yourself to pause because if you're reacting, you don't know which part of you is being activated. So if you can take a pause and get back to this regulate and control the moment, because these are when moments can be, when control can actually be good or productive for you, where you don't react and then have to backpedal later and, and apologize or forgive or whatever, where you can just be like, okay, like I can let go of how I thought that was gonna go and this is an unexpected thing. How can I navigate, you know, and I think it's kind of a way of life. It's kind of a personality. It's adopting a personality part of you that's just like, <sighs> sometimes you just can't control everything. So sometimes you can't control anything. Maybe we aren't controlling anything, which leads me to the serenity prayer, right? If anyone has done any um, AA, NA, OA, any of the a anonymous stuff, they, they use this prayer a lot. I don't always... Um, subscribe to everything that they do in those courses and in that in that program but I have been a part of it and God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference you know it's know thyself and know you know I think one of the questions I have here is how do we identify what we can change 
I don't know if it's always about identifying what you can change, but I think it's about taking that moment to ask the question in the moment. <laughs> like, is this something that I can have power into over um, what what is available to me right now? It's, it's the questions, you know? Um, someone said yesterday to me, I love your coaching style. And I thought about that last night and I was thinking, what is my coaching style? Like, what does that even mean? And I was like, you know, it's the art of asking questions. That's all I really have decided to master. Because in self-inquiry, the answer is always in the question. If you're not asking a question, you're not questioning it's the status quo of your yourself. So yeah, I think if you know, learn learn to ask yourself some questions or join any of my programs, because that's what we do. In fact, we have a my Rise program is coming up. I know this is gonna sound crazy, it's coming up in March. We're already getting signed up, so I decided to like launch it out now. And it's an amazing program for self-inquiry and for really looking to pivot in your life. You know, we go from a process of looking back, identifying some of the things of where you are and why you got there. But then we really mostly focus in this program during the first eight weeks to come to take this metaphorical and physical walk to a pivot point where you honor where you've been and almost like you're ready to shed an old skin and an identity and you say hello to the new self. And then we go on this very very mindful process to step into your new self. And then we end the program with the 30 days to change, which is very powerful because you're literally putting that new self into practice. Ooh, you want a one? Okay, here, here you go. Let me get it right now. I'm picking the top card, Liz. Owl. Here you go. Owl, 21. Owl was my spirit animal. For a really long time. I'll just give you the highlight of what it says at the top. 21 is deception. Your control of your life could be deceiving you to make you feel safe and and cushy, cushy when really it's holding you back from that vulnerability. So don't be deceived by control. Let go. All right, I'm glad that served you. Um, We'll just jump into this. Mindy wanted 14. Jamal, if you're still here, anyone else who wants a, uh, an animal card, give me a number. I'm going to check my notes while these numbers come in. If they do, Mindy, you wanted 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, Jamal, you wanted 3. 1, 2, 3. Okay, Mindy, Mindy, if you're still here, you got the bear, the bear number five. Look at him right there. Wow. I love these animals. I feel mellow today. I feel myself all mellow. Introspection. The bear, the strength of the bear medicine is the power, power of introspection. Yeah, I mean, Mindy, it's, you are going through, you said, a time of introspection and maybe one of the, the, the pieces is like letting go. I see you, Adrian, 19. The letting go is a part of the control. Actually, I was really asking myself because I always deal, I always ask myself what's the opposite of every word because everything's traveling with its counterpart. So if you're not in control, what are you in? I would love to hear that actually, um, Jamal, Adrian, if you're still here or anyone else is here. If you're not in control, what are you in? Flow? spontaneity trust those are the ones that came up for me just curious so yeah the bear introspection it's the female receptive energy that for centuries has allowed visionaries mystics and shamans to prophecy um, is contained in this very special bear energy mindy i think for you to um tap into that mystical kind of you know all the clairvoyant stuff that we've been talking about is to Harness bear energy. It's your female receptive energy, like the meditation that I keep offering you to possibly, you know, integrate, which is like sitting and listening. Be receptive instead of controlling each thing that's trying to come in. Open. I love that. In India, the cave symbolizes the cave of Brahma. Brahma's cave is considered to be the pineal, the pineal gland and sits in the center of the four lobes of the brain. 
Wow, that's really cool. So when you go into your bear cave, you're basically going into your, your pineal gland, your intuitive sense of self. All right. To become like bear and enter the safety of the womb cave, we must attune ourselves to the energies of the eternal mother and receive nourishment from the placenta of the great void. Whoa. Hey, Glenn, down picking cars. If you want one, give me a number. That's deep. The great void is the place where all solutions and answers live in harmony with the questions that fill our realities. If we choose to believe that there are many questions to life, we must also believe that the answers to these questions reside within us. Each and every being has the capacity to quiet the mind, enter silence, and know. Dig in bare energy for this control stuff because that is exactly what is on the opposite of control is the unknown. And this is saying bare energy enters the safety of the cave, which is the unknown, which is the black void space, which by the way, in the RISE program, we literally have a whole section on your relationship with the unknown. And it's very powerful to realize that the space of unknown, which is like this black void, is actually the space of endless possibilities. Anything can be created there. And what are we, why are we holding control? Because we're afraid of the endless possibilities. I mean, <laughs> Of course we are. It's too much sometimes. And if you're not connected to your north and your your yourself, it's hard to know what to do in that space of endless possibilities. Jamal, antelope. <laughs> antelope. You said chaos is the other side of control. Interesting. Hmm, let's think about that. If you're controlling something, chaos. I think chaos, by the way, is one of the five rhythms. Um, antelope, 37. Hi, Stacy, picking cards over here. I love seeing everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm moving slow today. Things are, I'm working on a crazy puzzle. <laughs> it's funny being over here. Okay, 37 is the antelope. Action. Jamal, this was you, right? Action. When taking action. So yeah, I guess, you know what? There's a, sometimes controlling can be action. Sometimes controlling, because you're taking action, you're controlling what you're doing. Sometimes control can prevent you from taking action. What? Control is such a weird one. Freedom is on the other side. Stacy, I was asking, I'd love to hear what you think. Like what is, um, what's the opposite of control for you? Okay, when time, let's see. Antelope knew that humankind would survive the Ice Age. Let's see. Antelope. Antelope taught humans to honor the gifts sent from the great mystery and to avoid indiscriminate destruction of life. Antelope signifies knowledgeable action. I like that because not just any action, knowledgeable action, which could be like a controlled action in that sense, positive and productive. Antelope is a symbol for the antenna of of your hair, which attaches to the great mystery by its long cords of light. Your hair, <laughs> perfect for you, Jamal, right? Um, I guess we'll just go with the crown of your head and being the antenna to source light energy, which is where you can get what type of controlled action to take. Looking at antelope, you become aware of your mortality and the short time span you have on this planet. So I guess taking action is about remembering, it says here, immortality. Seize the day, brother. Do it. Antelope medicine is the knowledge of life circle. Knowing of death, antelope can truly live. Woo! Action is the key and essence of living. Just said this today in my other group. Pray and move your feet. Manifestation cannot just be sitting there going, I want this, I want this, I want this. In fact, I want, I want, I want will only create more things to want. It doesn't actually bring it to you. And this is why people put the um, law of attraction down sometimes is you just can't sit there going, Ooh, you have to move your feet, you have to do something, you have to take action. All right, Adrian, I forgot, I need to scroll up. 19, 
and five. Okay, I have time, Stacy. 19, Adrian, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and Glenda, five, one, two, three, four, five, and 14, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, Oh my God, these are good. Okay, horse. Adrian, horse, 35. Here we go. So yeah, we're talking about control. And um, one of the questions I was asking is what role does control play in your life? But more so also, more so and also, what is your relationship with spontaneity? Okay, so here, horse. Power, of course, I should know that. I'm trying to learn these cards. Horsepower, horsepower, horsepower. Remember, remember, remember. Adrian, power. You can actually, you know what? Control can feel very powerful. Like currently I'm controlling my schedule in a very tight, controlled way that feels very powerful. I have, my whole schedule is revolved around my working out. And I am controlling that where and how I'm spending my energy on all day long. And, it, and, and there's a lot of power that comes from it, from doing anything consistently, but showing up for yourself. And sometimes, you know, like this control word is so weird to me because it's like I keep wanting to, in my head, I guess, make it like bad. But actually, the more I'm thinking about it, control is really powerful. It's like willpower and controlling your mind and managing yourself. I think it's basically when it just goes too far and you box yourself into that control box that I talked about, that's when we're back to um, everything in moderation, including moderation. That's a Julia Child quote. So yeah, where in your life can you are you feeling power from controlling something? Maybe you're controlling. I'm also fasting 20 hours every day right now. I'm controlling that. And let me tell you, there's days that I'm just like, oh my God, this is fascinating. Oh yeah, Jamal, I'm doing 20, 24 now. Fasting 24 hours every day with an OMAD, one meal a day. It's fascinating. I stop eating at 8 p.m. and I and I have my snack with this, which is a bone broth at 4 p.m. and then I have like a little another snacky snack and then I basically just have my dinner, early dinner, and then I allow myself a little dessert. It's great because you can have like everything that you might want, but it the, man the mind tricks. Talk about control, man. My mind tries to control me in that moment. Okay, next was Glenda. Look, butterfly, beautiful. Nine. Are you going through a transformation right now? Because we know that this is about transformation. And last week I talked about identity shifting and I had this really interesting thought about the caterpillar because we always are talking about the butterfly. Oh, it transformed. But what about the caterpillar and the fact that it literally has to change identity? Oh, Joe Dispenza said this. He's like, the caterpillar, it goes in and it changes its identity and it has to, I mean, when we're relating it metaphorically to us, decide what kind of butterfly. It doesn't decide what kind of butterfly. Obviously, it has it in, in, in it already the kind of butterfly but it's gonna, that's going to be. But in our sense... We go in, we transform something, and we decide what we want to come out. I know, right? Metamorphize. I've been. I always connect with the the butterfly energy and just transformation and change and the fact that my name is Meta, Metamorphize, Metamorphosis. Like I've always related to owl energy, butterfly energy. Um, so yeah, it's about transformation. The power that butterfly brings us is akin to the air. It is the mind and the ability to know the mind or to change it. It is the art of transformation. So, whoa, super powerful right now because we're talking about control and the art of letting yourself change your mind. You know, if you've heard my story many times about, I've talked about this in most of my programs because this was one of the huge moments for me. Like um, Osho, he's an Indian mystic who I've also is one of my, kind of like people I've read and look up to and lived on his Osho ashram in Pune, India for six months and blah, blah, blah. But 
there's a discourse that he gave and he was like going on and on and on and on. It was like a two hour discourse or something ridiculous. Like he was sitting there making all these, this point he was making a point. And at the very end of this huge long discourse, he says a super contradictory sentence like that basically negated everything he had just said. And one of his disciples raised his hand and was like, but you just said all of that. And Osho goes, I changed my mind. And it was in that moment that I realized how much we don't have permission to change our mind in this world. And that's a lot of the time why we stay not speaking or speaking up or not saying certain things is because we're, we're almost like, as if it locks us in and we're not allowed to change our mind. Well, changing your mind is like, like the, the thing that I say, go for it. Like, <laughs> that's the thing that, that keeps you changing. That's the thing that keeps you challenging your own status quo. And then that's what keeps you out of staying in the lockdown of your own mind and control. Um, does the caterpillar fight to have resistance in the transformation? No, it doesn't, but it does have to do its own wiggle and push through. And I often talk about, that's my mom's phone, which is one of the most, we meditate to it. All things in nature and the womb woman pushing to make a change and to evolve and transform have to go through a space of resistance. That's so like the caterpillar has to push through. And like, I think it's probably the same with the caterpillar and the, and the butterfly that it is with the, the caterpillar, caterpillar surrenders to liquefying itself. Yes. I mean, we're personifying onto these animals. Cause, um, I was just talking to my dad about this or we're like, do they, they don't feel they, I don't think a caterpillar is in a state of surrender. It just is, it accepts its path. And its path might, I guess in some ways it is a surrendering. It's just not an emotional surrendering. And um, I was going to say something though about when women change their mind, we are told we are fickle. Yes, Patty, I know. Or like, how dare us change our mind? You know, as if like we have to stick by what we said. I don't, I don't subscribe to that. Because what worked for me one minute may not work for me the next. I may have learned something literally two seconds later that made me decide that that wasn't true anymore. And that's powerful. That to me is like self mastery is to give yourself that permission to change your mind to say, Hey, I could, I was wrong two seconds ago. And that's what I changed my mind story is all about. All right, Stacy Crow. Didn't you get this before? Oh no, Mindy got this before 24. The crow. <laughs> I'm glad we're all on the same page here with what we're subscribing to. Speaking of which, if you haven't subscribed to my newsletter. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I do send out newsletters every Sunday that recap this topic and put the links to the videos. And I usually write something. There's an audio with it. I'm not just kidding. I was kidding with the subscribe thing, but I'm actually not kidding. If you do like these topics, you can go to Lisa uh, metamorphize.com and, and you can get my newsletter. It's powerful. I think I, I, I put a lot of love into them. Okay. And you also get updated on any upcoming programs I have. So 24, here we go. All right. What do you all think about the crow? Oh yeah. Law. I, I, I got to start remembering these things. I'm relying on the book too much. I need to ask myself, okay, crow is what it's the law. Okay. Um, yeah, the crow, all sacred texts are under the protection of crow. Stacy, you are crow energy. You hold so much sacred text knowledge. It's, it's, it's amazing. And, you know, I guess if I want to, I want to keep countering all the things I'm saying and thinking, it's like, okay, that's the other thing about sacred texts. Sometimes they hold us um into a control like as if the sacred text said to do it the 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 religion the like the the rules 
are very can be very controlling. So I think this also opens up the concept of boundaries, which we haven't talked about much today. Um, oh, I forgot this one thing I wanted to say. This was good. This was another download I had. When you are someone side, just pause for one second on the crow energy, although it might relate. If you're someone who's like a control freak and you're trying to control everything, which then I talked about earlier leads to possibly disappointment because you're you're never going to have it exactly how you want it all the time. I thought about how you're living a life where you're managing your disappointment, like all day you're managing disappointment instead of living your life. So that's, that's can't be fun to live like that constant management of the disappointment of the control versus just be in the moment. Okay. Um, Crow. Yes. You like that, Stacey? I like that for you. It's the sacred, it's the keeper of sacred law. Crow can bend the laws of the physical universe and shape shift. I love shape shifting and the concept of it. This ability is rare and unique. Stacy, you're a shape shifter. Patty, did you give me a, a number if you wanted a card? I don't know if I picked one for you. If you're still here. Sorry if I missed it. There's a lot of things coming in. Shape shifting. Um, the sacred law, creators. Let's see what else it says here. Children are taught to behave accordingly to the rules of a particular culture. Most orthodox religion systems create a mandate concerning acceptable behavior within the context of worldly affairs. Do this and so, and you will go to heaven. Do thus and so, and you will go to hell. Different formulas for salvation are demanded by each true faith. That's that controlling of our society. Now, now we're getting into a whole different topic, but see how it's amazing how this one word control has like, we've gone all over the place, self-control. Like I started, I started this whole thing off by saying the types of control that I could think of were self-control, other control, things you can't control, like the weather and want to control, but you can control your response to all of this stuff. I was just hanging out with a rabbi who goes straight to chapter and verse. I reserve the right to be smarter today than I was yesterday. I also reserve the right to be wrong. I guess smarter is a better way of putting that. Um, so yeah, you got crow. I love it. I freaking love it. It says here at the end, Stacy, this is for you. Ready? As you learn to allow your personal integrity, integrity to be your guide, your sense and feeling alone will vanish. Your willpower can then emerge so that it will stand, so that you will stand in your truth. Your willpower is a form of control. The prime path of true crow people says to be mindful of your opinions and actions. Be willing to walk your talk, speak your truth, know your life's mission, and balance the past, present, and future in the now. Shape shift that old reality and become your future self. Allow the bending of physical laws to aid in creating the shape shifted, shape -shifted world of peace. That is for all of us, but Stacy. I feel that so much. Crow, rem remember that crow looks at the world with first one eye and then the other, cross-eyed. In the Mayan culture, cross-eyed had the privilege and duty of looking into the future. We meditate. <laughs> Again, training. Um. You must put aside your fear of being a voice in the wilderness and call the shots as you see them. Not call the shots, call! <laughs> call the shots. Stacey, it's time to call the shots as you see them. I love a good pun in a medicine, um, animal medicine book. Hilarious, okay. 
Okay, bad connection. 27. This will be the last card. That was so awesome. I really appreciate that reading for all of us right now. You know? Oh, 27. Here we go. Here we go. What time is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 27. Deer. Almost one almost came out the other day in front of my car. It was freaking scary. Oh, I just turned to it. Aw, gentleness. To be gentle. What a great thing to end with. Gentleness, the deer. When it comes to control, you know, sometimes it can feel aggressive, maybe, or like again, that rigidity and when I think gentle, I think of a softening, you know, softening. What do you think, Patty? Let's see. Dear, so gentle and loving you are, the flower of kindness and, um, and embrace from afar. Oh, so the, when I almost hit the deer, he was giving, he or she was giving me a hug from afar. <laughs> okay, this is a fawn though. This is actually, it's your, it looks like a baby deer. Okay, so let's see. Deer teaches us to use the power of gentleness to touch the hearts and minds of wounded beings who are trying to keep us from sacred mountain. Like the dappling of fawn's coat, both the light and the dark may be loved to create gentleness and safety for those who are seeking peace. That's beautiful. You need to soften up. How about... You're opening to softening because I'm sure you're, what's the opposite of soft? Hard? Do you feel you're hard? Let's see. If deer has gently nudged its way into your cards today, you are being asked to find the gentleness of spirit that heals all wounds. Stop pushing so hard to get others to change and love them as they are. Apply gentleness to your present situation and become like the summer breeze warm and caring this is your tool for solving the present dilemma you are facing if you use it you will connect with the sacred mountain your centering place of serenity and the great spirit will guide you girl i totally feel you on the, the softening i how about this okay when i was working with the softening and the hard and the soft and the hard part of myself, which I was very mean about at some point because, so I grew up, I grew up, I, I have two brothers and a dad. That's a lot of masculine energy. Then I moved to New York and I have my own business and the New York has a masculine energy to it. And there was a lot of like hardness that you have to put up. There was the hustle, there was the controlling, there was my addictions, there was my attachments. And I'm just going to jump ahead to hopefully offer you this. What I realized is that that was my development of my masculine, my inner masculine, and there was nothing wrong with that. That was the timing of that. And then maybe right now, this is your time in your life to develop your feminine, the energy within you that just needs your attention, the receptive, the softening, whatever that means for you. Like I was a tomboy. I was playing sports growing up. So like you see me like this today, my nails are done like I was learning to wake up whatever being feminine meant for me. So let me know if that resonates with you. Like instead of looking at it as a bad thing, like now is your time. This is the perfect time for you to, Mindy, it's perfect. You're saying you needed the deer card too. And look, we all have masculine and feminine and we all have hard and soft and we all have control, for, control and we all have flow. And that's the whole thing, right? It all travels together. So if you are at a time when you are saying to yourself that I'd like to soften, then that's just you giving yourself information to ask a few questions. What does my inner feminine energy need right now? What does it look like if I led with that energy right now? And actually it's interesting, like I feel very soft this morning. I feel slower. I feel um, like a, so yeah, I just, I'm in my, my feminine today. But if you saw me last week, I was like, <laughs> I was going at it hard. I was talking a mile a minute. And I think that then that brings you to choice. Whenever you can harness 
the power or the, whenever you can get curious and have a relationship with both sides of whatever the polarity is, that gives you the flexibility to find the middle inside of the whole spectrum. And I often say that balance or harmony is the is basically just knowing balance exists because of its polarities. So if you want to feel like a well-rounded um, human being that knows how to activate all the different energies, you know, fine, you're in your masculine energy. Okay, what is it like now to live in your feminine energy? And then what is it like to know which one to call upon in, in, to know which one inside of life? So we're gonna end with that. Um, glad it makes sense to you. And I'm wishing everybody the most magical Tuesday here. And um, yeah, just to think about what you think about. And again, I've got Rise. It's a program. It's a 90-day program. It'll, Patty, if you're interested in anything like that, I can talk to you. It actually starts in March, but you're going to get a lot of stuff um, between now and then support by me and from me. And again, if you want to subscribe to my newsletter, it's on my website, metamorphize.com, which you will find all around. All right. Happy manifesting. Bye. Reach out if you have any questions about anything. One love. <laughs>